Hey guys, welcome back to Pop'em Up Chem, and we're starting unit 8 and 18 today, which is acids and bases. We're going to start us off with some theories of acids and bases. As always, comment below, let me know what you're thinking, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and share the video and the channel. If you've got time, check out our other channels, that's Pop'em Up Life and Pop'em Up Food. Links will all be in the description. So we're going to start off at the beginning and looking at the different theories of acids and bases and how to define them. We're also going to look at forming conjugates and identifying them from their structure. So quick note on something that a lot of students I know have problems with is that when we say alkali or base, what do we mean? Well, alkalis are quite simply just soluble bases. So we can say that all alkalis are bases, but not all bases are alkalis. That is, alkalis are only soluble bases. So first definition we're going to look at is Arrhenaeus acids and bases. And these are the simple H plus and OH minus, probably what we've already considered as acids and bases before looking at this. So that is where H plus and OH minus can combine to form water. Here we can use HCl and NaOH to represent where they come from. That's a classic neutralization reaction. So probably nothing new here for most of you. Okay, so hopefully you're familiar with this type already. The next type we're going to look at is Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases. Now, what these two actually did independently of each other is they managed to remove us just to find the base as OH minus and allow us to move on to having the definition revolve around just H plus just looking at protons and that's very helpful because there are some things that act like bases but don't contain that OH minus ion so this is useful because it broadens our definition. So if we have a look at our acid definition here, the proton donor, that really hasn't changed from our definition from Arrhenaeus. We here have a monoprotic and a diprotic acid, as in they give one or two protons. However, our base definition has changed. Now the base is a proton acceptor. That means something like ammonia here can be seen as a base because it accepts a proton. Okay, moving on from that definition now, we want to use that theory of acids and bases to look at conjugate acid-base pairs. So a conjugate base is a species that has one less proton than its parent ion or parent species, and a conjugate acid is a species that has one more proton. Let's have a look with something like HCl. So to find the conjugate base of HCl, which is an acid, we look above and we see that it's the species that has one less proton. So we can write H plus, we take away the proton, and what's left is Cl minus. So we can say that here, the Cl minus is the conjugate base of HCl, because HCl is an acid, so its conjugate base is it with one less proton. So in this case, HCl losing one proton just leaves Cl minus, so we consider Cl minus the conjugate base. Let's try the inverse process of that with a base and try and find the conjugate acid. So we can take something like ammonia maybe. And remember that a conjugate acid is a species that has one more proton. So we'll do NH3 and this time we're going to add a proton because we're looking for a species that has one more proton. And it's simply going to be NH4 plus all as one and that we would then consider from NH3 as gained one proton so we would consider this the conjugate acid. Okay let's do a few more examples so then you can do some questions yourself. Let's try HF, nice simple one. First we want to write the formula of its conjugate base. Now remember the conjugate base is something that has lost a proton so if we take away a proton from hf we take away h plus then we're going to get f minus plus h plus of course it's literally that simple guys let's try h2so4 so when we write the conjugate we only want to take one proton away at a time so we're just going to write hso4 minus 
H plus. H plus, that simple. We're just taking away one proton at a time. Let's do one more with phosphoric acid. That's H3PO4. Of course, we're going to take away one proton, gives us H2PO4 minus plus our proton. Every time taking away one proton if you're trying to find the formula of the conjugate base. Now, with something like HSO4 minus, you may see that it will go to SO42 minus, and that would be the conjugate, the further conjugate base of the SO4 minus ion but if you ask for the conjugate base you take away one proton at a time let's try the inverse process with oh minus so here we're adding a proton remember we're going to gain a proton when we're writing conjugate acids so oh minus plus h plus is of course h2o simple as that let's do one more and find the conjugate of that so4 2 minus ion add a h plus and of course we're doing the inverse of that process up the top and we're gonna have HSO4 one minus. Okay, here's some questions for you to do to see if you're keeping up. You can pause the video here to have a go at those. Okay, going through those then, remember with the conjugate base, we want to lose a proton. So we're gonna get CH3COO minus plus H plus. With the H2O, we're obviously going to form OH minus and H plus. And with NH4 plus, we're going to form ammonia, NH3 plus H plus. Now with the conjugate acid, we're going to be gaining a proton. And so that's going to be HPO4 2 minus is going to form H2PO4 1 minus. If we add a proton here, we're going to form the quaternary amine uh, with the NH2 plus and lastly we form the hydronium ion. So we can use these skills of identification of conjugates in an overall equation. So here we have uh, ammonia reacting with water and we can see that the ammonia gains a proton from the reactants to the products. So if we know that it's gaining a proton then it's obviously acting as a base so we have our bronsted lowry base in ammonia and we have its conjugate acid the ammonium ion now when we turn our attention to the water we can see that it loses a proton as we'd expect so if it's losing a proton then in this case the water is acting as our bronsted lowry acid and the hydroxide ion the conjugate base all right let's do a question and apply that then Get on your whiteboards. So I want you to label the Bronsted Lowry acid and base and the conjugates in this reaction. Pause the video here to give yourself some time. Pop them up. Hopefully then you should have seen that the first ion was gaining a proton. So if it's gaining a proton, it's acting as the base and the HF is losing a proton, so it is acting as an acid with the products as their respective conjugates. So we've already seen that in different scenarios, different species can act as an acid or base. Indeed, let's take the example of this water here. So you can see that the one on the right, if we kind of pair it with the OH, it loses a proton and the one on the left kind of gains a proton. So we could say that water is acting as both an acid and a base here. And in fact, many substances do this, and there's a name for this. We call this showing amphoteric properties. And all amphoteric means is that it can act as both an acid and a base. And another word we can use for that is amphiprotic, which just means that it has the ability to lose or gain a proton. So amphi coming from the Greek, I think, to do all or to do both and so if we look at the HSO4 minus ion we can see that if it gains a proton then we go back to H2SO4 that's sulfuric acid and if it loses a proton it's going to go all the way down to the sulfate ion so we could say that HSO4 minus is amphiprotic so now we want to come on to our last way we can define acids and uh, Gilbert Lewis here wanted to expand our definition of acids and bases even further and this we're using a pair of electrons so 
Let's use this reaction as an example here because instead we're going to define base as an electron pair donor and an acid and electron pair acceptor. So no protons needed here. So we've got here this tertiary amine is able to donate a pair of electrons to boron trifluoride here and that's going to end up forming a dative bond and forming this whole molecule bonded here but this is an acid base reaction in terms of a Lewis acid base and as you can see we haven't got any of the traditional uh, what we would think of as acids of bases way back in the Arrhenaeus. Instead all we've got is the lone pair determining that the tertiary amine is the base and we've got the fact that there's an incomplete octet on the BF3 which allows it to form a full octet so it's effectively electron deficient so it's happy to accept electrons and because of that we can consider that a base in the Lewis acid and bases theory. So how do we know if we've got a Lewis acid or base? Well the simplest thing for us to do is to draw out the Lewis structure um, but there are a few rules we can follow so for example all positively charged ions are going to be Lewis acids of course because they're going to attract electrons and inversely negatively charged ions are therefore going to be Lewis bases. Of course it's not always going to be that simple and we may need the full Lewis structure for us to be able to determine whether we have an acid or a base. So let's take the example of uh, AlCl3. Now on the surface this may seem like it's neither however we know that aluminium has a reduced octet in this case and because it has a reduced octet that means that it will happily accept electrons and so therefore accepting electrons means that we will act as a Lewis acid. Let's do a couple of simple questions to see how you're getting on. So is Na plus a Lewis acid or base? Pause the video here to give yourself a try. Pop them up. It is, of course, a Lewis acid. So, is Br minus a Lewis acid or Lewis base then? Pause the video here to give yourself some time for that. Pop them up. Yes, of course, Br minus is a Lewis base. So, let's just pick up that example that I gave to introduce Lewis acids and bases reaction of boron trifluoride with ammonia or I think I did it with a tertiary amine but still we can do it with this so let's see what's happening well we can see that the ammonia has a lone pair which it is donating to the boron trifluoride so we know that we're going to form that covalent bond uh, dative covalent bond but we also know that ammonia here is acting as a base because it is giving electrons it's acting as a Lewis base and the boron trifluoride is acting as a Lewis acid. We can also see that the hybridization of our boron in our reactants is sp2 that's actually changed to sp3 in our products so we can note in this reaction we've actually got also a change in hybridization. So let's have a look at another reaction that may not initially seem like an acid base reaction. So we can take some copper ions and react them with six times as many water molecules. Now water having lone pairs, as we know, lone pairs means that we have a Lewis base and the that will donate its electrons to the copper central um, ion, which is obviously going to be acting as a Lewis acid. Once we draw this molecule, we see Oh, well, we've got a transition metal complex and indeed we can conceptualize transition metal compounds as acid base reaction products because we have our copper central ion acting as our Lewis acid and our ligands acting as Lewis bases. In fact, because of the definition of a, of a Lewis base and the definition of a ligand being an electron pair donor, we can say that all ligands are indeed Lewis bases. So let's do some practice on using the structure of molecules to determine if they would be acids or bases with our Lewis definition. 
Here you've got two lists. You will need to use the structure of these molecules. So if you're out of practice drawing Lewis structures, now's a good time to refresh. Pause the video here and give yourself some time to complete those questions. Okay, all the one highlighted in green were correct. Let's just go through. So ALCL3, well, we already did that one, so I'm not gonna do that one again. For BH3, we have an incomplete octet, which is similar to ALCL3. So of course it's electron deficient. H plus is positive charge, we said. That's a very simple way to attract electrons. Cu2 plus is also positively charged and NH4 is also positively charged. Remember, anything that positively charged is gonna attract electrons, so it's gonna act as a Lewis acid. Moving on to our second, we can say these are ones that are gonna give away electrons. OH minus obviously is going to donate electrons. NH3 has a lone pair of electrons. The C2H5OH, this one, two lone pairs on the oxygen, just like with the water, and so therefore acts as a Lewis base. And Cl minus, of course, is negatively charged, so also acts as a base. So all Arrhenaeus are Bronsted Lowry acids, all Bronsted Lowry acids are also Lewis acids, and the same is true for bases. So we can think of them as being inside one another. Each definition broadens the amount of molecules and broadens the amount of species that we can consider acids or bases. These are the three kind of expanding theories of acids and bases, if you like. So to summarize, as always, you're gonna to wanna to do questions and make sure you really understand the differences in the definitions between the three theories of acids. Thanks for watching, guys. Comment below, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, check out our other channels. And as always, practice makes slightly better.